this is after um, Drake got to play. Oh shit! He dropped that video. He dropped that video where he wanted to spend. Yeah, more money. He wanted to spend the budget of the video on handing it on video, handing it to people. And I'm sitting here like, okay, this is cool. Like you handed people bands, like I right, ten thousand. Like I feel good about myself. I spend on some good stuff. Like I feel better about myself. And then I'd be like, hey, I'm just gonna have the same problems in six weeks. Because mm -hmm. now, now I have a place to live, but I don't have a job to sustain his friends. <laughs> and like, I, I got out of debt. Like, I started from square zero finally. Like, I got level, but now I can't like, sustain it. And Drake is still going to tour across the goddamn world for like three million of appearance. If people are going to spend an ungodly amount of money to be a VIP at his concert. And you know, still live in the hood. You will continue stealing music. You know, you know, continue dodging the fact that you have Ghost Riders. Yeah. Also, the fact that you do have a child that you don't talk about or yeah. see. Push your teeth, destroy that name. Oh, for the record, but nobody wants to talk about it. I was going to read this poem. That's that Drake TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Drake TikTok belongs to Crystal, but she'll read that poem for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. She'll read that poem for you. Uh, so, God's going. Schoolboy Q has a line off oxymoron where he says, if God won't help me, this done well. That's about the blackest thing I've ever heard. Because there are no white kids in private schools in Lower and Cornwall that will ever even know someone that will relate to that statement. They'll never meet that person. And if they do, they'll let their misconceptions stop them from opening their minds to what life can be. And even I, I have gotten to a point where I, I thought about picking up a gun and jacking poor suckers on the side because I wasn't making it any, weather, any other way. Yeah, that plan lasted in my head about as long as going to the military did. It's about three days. Show me all the people who understand this statement. So we can talk about handing them, so we can talk about them handing out plates and making beer runs at my cookout. Watching the doors to make sure the true undesirables have no idea what's really going on in my backyard. Because in my barbecue, we are happy. We played J. Cole and Kendrick and Kid Cudi and Kanye from when he was wearing a polo, still walking around the way, not like he was animated in that Childish Gambino video where he's being hugged by Michelle Obama while he's wearing that mega hat. Dear God, somebody, somebody tell Michelle Obama to really go hug that man, take that hat off his head. See that shit. I want Kanye for when he was wearing a polo still walking around awake rapping about backpacks and how Bush Bush didn't give a shit about black people. On, Katrina happened and now we're having people argue about we found water in Puerto Rico. We want to argue about well Puerto Rico's numbers aren't real. Puerto Ricans are Americans. We had delayed outrage about Katrina in Louisiana. What? The heck do you think is gonna happen when the West of this country wakes up and realizes that Puerto Rico is actually one of us? Mm. But at my barbecue, we celebrate whatever the hell we want, and yes, we eat our cake. And we get baked. We roll up swishers and zigzags and top papers and OCB. We take the weed and smoke away the anxiety of driving down the street. We play neighbors on repeat. My car looks like it's a bump away from a fatal leap, but how I keep it running is a boring track. I've got a I'm a John VP at B, and these white people sneak peek at me in the street at 4 a.m. taking off, and I gotta have a drug appointment at me, cause that's the only way white people afford to buy me in the hood, right? It's possible for us to have a job, right? It's a 90 minute commute with traffic. I pay for two tanks of three dollars a gallon or more for diesel gasoline every week, every day. I run the risk of being pulled over and killed because I work in a town where to enter it, I travel down a procession of American flags and signs that say, welcome to white men. Respect our country's laws or leave. Trump won. Get over it. I make like 500 a week if the overtime is steady. Now, if I cut my hair off and I didn't wear this week, if I cut my nails and I didn't polish them anymore, if I got had a code switch and carried a switch and something with a trigger, if I had a finger itch to scratch, I could flip way more than just weed. I could profit way more than 500 in a day. How the hell do you think Jay-Z went from selling rock to buying out the Vatican with Beyonce? Come on, man. That's what a gun will do for me. If I really wanted to get mixed in with these kinds of endeavors, and these are my options that are readily available because my schools don't have books. Mm. But I don't have my upper middle class parents in my pocket. I know you're not rich, but do you know what it means to have your car damages after an accident just paid for a new car waiting in the wings? Do you know what it means when you only ever have interactions with cops to go sorry when you have someone with some melanin in your group? Are you aware of what privilege is? 
We are not pervading daily with the cost of education. See, the cost of books is not a burden. The cost of lunch will not be a burden. The cost of tuition will not be your burden. The cost of the perception of your educational background on your resume isn't a burden. You went to an HBCU? Your skin color doesn't weigh down your application with the strain of fighting uphill for every class, every skill, every reference. Yes, grabbing a gun sounds so much easier. It would be no more dangerous than walking outside my house today. Yeah.